Goodwill Cafe employees are now selling their products to homeless people in order to promote their business. So what we have here is a well-known business asking homeless people to buy their products because they worry that they might run out of profit. It is despicable. I mean, this is disgusting. I mean, how are you going to stoop so low to even ask homeless people to buy your products? Yes, well, every so now and then, we at the Goodwill Cafe staff ask nearby homeless people to quote-unquote buy our bagels in order for them to promote their products to nearby wealthy upper-class people. So what we have here is a sort of chain reaction. We give to the homeless people, the homeless people give to the rich people, and the rich people give to us. Well, I'm sorry, you said quote-unquote. So are you selling to homeless people or not? What does that mean? Well, that is what we want the people to think. Our plan is to merely ask homeless people to take our bagels for free, just to kind of isolate them for about 10 to 15 minutes, so that once a rich person passes by and sees this delicious yummy bagel in the hands of a homeless person, it would attract them to our business. Bleh. Oh, I love this bagel. I really love this bagel. I think you should try this bagel, sir. Caught. Can you try doing it with a bit less enthusiasm? We don't want people to think this is a commercial. I love this bagel. I think you should try this bagel, sir. We've had customers walk into our store and say, Oh, I spoke to this homeless person. He said your bagels taste really good. This is Marketing 101 here. We usually allow our homeless workers to eat the bagel once the target audience is out of sight. But we have like a certain time limit. So essentially every five minutes, they are allowed to take a bite so that the bagel doesn't run out too fast. And at the end of the day, we give them a sum of money as a payment. Yeah, and this works for your business. Yeah. Our business stands as a testament to the boundless possibilities that come with determination and clear vision. We've succeeded in providing jobs to many homeless individuals, achieving what the government struggled to do. Stay tuned for more after the break. The Age Phobiac Good evening and welcome to the sixth official episode of the Michael Salinger Show, where we tackle down the most obscure real-life controversies which continue to roam today. I am your host, Frankie Grayson. Tonight in particular, we had a case which quote-unquote made many people blow a fuse. The unsuspecting Wilrow Hawkins, a man who seemed to speak only in declarations, has been labelled as a quote-unquote age phobiac, as he believes that his 80-year-old unemployed father-in-law should get a job, as if age and wisdom were things to be dismissed in favour of productivity. Philip Jacoby, 80 years old and far from wealthy compared to his affluential son-in-law, felt an irresistible urge to call him out. The calamity was set in motion at precisely 2 a.m., when Wilrow, broomstick in hand and fury in eyes, caught Jacoby red-handed with a slice of unpaid salami. Uh -oh, I thought you were a thief. You ought to pay for that, you squatter. Wilrow yelled, brandishing a broomstick as if it was ready for battle. Jacoby, however, stood unfazed. Hungry in the stillness of night, he believed he had every right to the salami feeling entitled as Wilrow's father-in-law. But the situation took a sharper turn when Jacoby, with a touch of indignity, accused Wilrow of threatening to call the cops on him. Sally, caught in the crossfire of family absurdity, reacted in the only way she knew how, by disappearing beneath her blankets 
cocooned in layers of fabric and avoidance, while her father and husband squared off like characters in a silent film. It was in this moment that Philip Jacobi, lodging his cane with quite dignity, decided enough was enough. Jacobi departed the Hawkins residence with a grand final declaration. I regret the day I consented to the marriage of my daughter. His words hung in the air like a heavy forgotten coat, as Wildro and Sally Hawkins exchanged looks of both relief and disbelief. At last, peace, or so they thought. However, this relief was short-lived. The following morning, a knock on the door echoed through the house. Jacoby had returned. With tensions escalating and arguments becoming more frequent, the Hawkinses decided to take drastic actions. They reached out to us on the Michael Salinger Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Hawkins, along with Grandpa Philip Jacoby. Mr. Jacoby, I am well aware that the relationship with your son-in-law has dwindled. But I do have to ask, do you feel that you could have handled the situation much better rather than um, slamming the door with a grand final declaration? The biggest mistake I've made, now the biggest mistake I've made, was allowing that man to marry my daughter. That could poop his old foam no beer. <laughs> Calm down, Mr. Jacoby. We all know that he wasn't the one who ate the salami after all. But it is important to note that your son-in-law was deemed, by the public at least, as an age phobiac. Can you spell out why you would agree with this? Well, it's simple, really. After wedding bells and she has all he's done is threaten me with a job. I'm 80 years old for crying out loud. Here's a millionaire after all. Yes, you see, that's the problem, Frankie. I bust my back of hard on labor to provide for my kids and wife. Sorry you had to hear this, James. But somehow I still find myself tethered to this old man. Gentlemen, please. This is a safe space for the both of you. Wilro, while your father-in-law's public outrage is certainly something to be behold, but threatening to call the authorities over a slice of salami, I... I think even you can see that may have been, shall we say, a bit much. Salami or no salami, my bank has reached the brink of extinction. I believe that I deserve an apology from the old wizard. Mr. Jacoby, not to cast blame, but I did come across a rather curious detail in one of the documents handed to me. It states that on Wilro's wedding, you said, and I quote, I met a loss of a penny or two. It would appear, sir, that your antics have been an ongoing feature in this family saga for quite some time. If he continues to be a thorn in my flesh, then I suggest we settle it all out in a ring, like men. Well, maybe we should. I'm unapologetic, and if he's rich and wants my daughter, she ought to know what hit her. One of these days, Sally. One of these days. Pow! Right in the kisser. How don't you threaten my wife, you pompous old b well, since we are on that topic, shall we get a word from uh, Sally here? I don't quite like violence, really. Now, if you boys will try to settle it down and fix your problems, maybe I'll have something to say about it, who knows. <coughs> well, now, I don't see why a uh, shaking of hands won't do the trick. Yes, well, why not? Yeah, whatever. Hey guys, I just say I'm enthusiast here. I just wanted to quickly tell you all my story if you could just spare a minute of your time. I'm a long time boner garage studios campaigner. And over the years, there's been a lots of ups and downs in the business. But I must say, this movement has been nothing short of a blessing. 
Subscribing to Just Sam has changed the way I view the world, teaching me countless unwavering lessons in life. And to be honest, this could be you too. So I highly recommend you to subscribe today and you will have no regrets. Just Sam Enthusiast, out. We would now like to recite a poem by Sir William Pickling. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's least hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometimes declines. By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. Kiss me good night, Sergeant Major. Tuck me in my little wooden bed. We all love you, Sergeant Major. When we hear you calling a show late, I don't forget to wake me in the morning and bring me any nice hot cup of tea.